You know, I'm always trying to help my corporate trainers, speakers, authors, and experts to be able to deliver their training programs and their presentations in a virtual or online aspect or an online platform. And what I want to do today is give you five tips to deliver a live virtual training. What are those things that really need to go into making that happen? Or just some quick tips that I can give you that can up level your game. First one is number one, which is thinking through your funnel. What's the end result of the actual training? And I don't mean just, you know, you've been pre presenting for a long time. You know what the heck you're talking about. You're an expert in your field. It is not just about delivering the training and doing well with making sure participants are going to walk away with what they need. It's about you saying, what am I going to do next? Or are you just delivering a training just to deliver a training? That makes no sense. You need to make sure you're thinking through, okay, what's the next thing I want them to actually do once they've seen this webinar, which now in the age of COVID or a pandemic, it's a shorter time span because people have shorter attention spans. So now where are you going to send them next? Is it to an online program? Is it to a new webinar series? Is it to your coaching? What is the end result you ultimately want? So don't do the webinar just to put content and information out there. You need to think through your funnel, your plan of what process you're taking a person through on their buyer's journey. Second tip I want to actually share with you is all about, you've heard a million times, content is king. You have to make sure it's valuable and it's good content. That's all well and good. It is very true, but you also need to think when you're doing a special, especially virtual content, what is kind of your theme? You know, mine is like five and five, or maybe it's your tips to give X, Y, Z. What is the theme that you want to showcase so that you can brand it so that it can be kind of like your trademark when you do these videos? People get a condition to seeing the same kind of theme or understanding what to expect when they connect with you. So that's one in regards to content being king. I also think it's the format. Having a varied format can be helpful, but also just saying, okay, you know what, every time I do these particular videos or I do this particular online you know, training or session, whatever it may be, I'm going to do it as a question and answer. I'm going to do it in an interview format, or I'm going to um, do some steps or answer a certain you know, amount of questions kind of thing, or maybe a challenge or a problem that they can overcome. But if you actually look at what your format's going to be, it makes it easier for you not to only set the expectation of what to expect from participants or your viewers but it also makes it easier for you to know how am I going to do these videos? How am I going to add value? And how is it going to continually market what I do and also deliver good information to your, basically your learners, people that want to hear what it is that you have to say. Tip number three is really getting comfortable with the platform, getting comfortable with the technology. I think it's, you know, it's it's all of us having to adapt now to the virtual world. All the tools, some of them have changed. Even if they haven't changed, the controls change, the settings, how they actually deliver things online. You need to make sure you've done some practice runs. And a couple of key tips that I've seen that people aren't necessarily saying, um, when you're actually connecting online, I think looking at the controls and like letting people in automatically versus you having to individually go and let somebody in or admit somebody. There's ways to set things up so that you can do that. How about making a decision? For example, I use Zoom, the Hollywood Squares. Do I want the Hollywood Squares or do I want a webinar platform version uh, where you're just having the panelists present and then you actually have the audience where they can just see the webinar happening and you can make some decisions as to how to connect with them or not. Or just you doing a couple of key things that I think are powerful. Looking into the camera and making sure, like if you're on Zoom and you're seeing on the, on the screen, you may be here and another person's here, but you may be looking at the person on the screen over to the left or over to the right. And what happens when you actually get that recording is you look like you're looking away from the viewers the entire time. Same thing goes with if you're reading content or, you know, you may look down for, you know, a couple of quick, quick glances at your notes or maybe even at the chat, but then coming back and knowing where your camera is and making sure that you're actually connecting with and talking to the camera. And the tip to do that, if you're connecting with someone on Zoom, is to spotlight or pin their video. It only will pin it inside your computer screen, but what you can do is put that close to or up high where your camera is. That way you're looking at them 
them, you get a chance to actually connect with them. But as you're responding to them, you're responding directly to the camera. So when you get that recording back, you always look like you're looking directly at your audience, which allows you to have a much better uh, connection and engagement opportunity directly with your audience. Tip number four for me is if you can have someone handle the chat. I had no idea how powerful this would be because not only of just the tip I just gave, which is looking off to the side because you've got to go and you're distracted in here connecting with the chat. Um, not to say that you may or may not do that depending on the engagement. Sometimes having someone manage the chat for you can be of significant value because they can make sure that they're actually hitting questions that are relevant. They're bringing in information that you can answer that can add value to everyone and not get caught up with all the engagement that may or or may not be happening in your chat function. So having someone there to do that and field those questions for you, bring that in, can be of extreme value and up level the game of how you deliver and engage with your people. And tip number five, finally, is being able to make sure you've got that engagement. And there are a few things. Yes, chat is one of them. Asking questions. I was just on another stream where they were fluid in asking questions. They not only did that, but one of the things I like to do is bring someone in and put them in what we would call a hot seat. I can actually activate your camera, bring you in, and we're kind of talking live in a little interview format, showcasing you really quickly, getting some feedback directly from another person instead of you being the only talking head on the video. And then you can let them go right back out when you're actually doing a live training. Sometimes also so it was great to see uh, a, a quick questionnaire that happened. It went, it was one of the functions, uh, and I, I'm using Zoom, but there are other tools that use similar platforms and similar opportunities, but it was like a quick four question deal. Everyone could chat in and it took them like 60 seconds. It was like two minutes at best. People answered the four little questions and they did the actual poll right there before the close of the actual video or the show, the live session. So those things all of a sudden chat, all of a sudden bringing people in, asking questions and getting a chance to see that feedback as well as what are people thinking about some of the key issues that could be of significant value can be a game changer for you delivering engaging live content. So this is your girl, Tony Navy. So excited to have you here and for more information, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, or on LinkedIn at the links below or in this video. Make it a great day, everyone. Take care.